afternoon and welcome to CEC Gurukul lecture. In the series on sociology of kinship, in today's lecture, I am going to discuss on an important concept in sociology of kinship that is intimacy. We are going to understand what is intimacy and how intimacy is related to the other concepts like friendship, family relationship, love, uh, arranged uh, kin relationship and most important is to see the connection between something which is kind of excluded or considered to be the realm of domestic to a larger political economic uh, process of social change that is globalization. And in this lecture, I am going to refer to the work of Lean Jeminson who is trying to understand intimacy as a analytical concept in the context of globalization and ethnocentrism. Now, let us try to understand what intimacy refers to. It refers to the quality of close connection between people and the process of building this uh, quality. So, there could be uh, involvement of sharing times, kind of uh, spending a lot of time together, sharing uh, thoughts and they uh, also in terms of building a relationship where the ideas or the situations are more or less similar. A number of studies conducted by scholars across, across the globe suggest that intimacy is a force in the package of social change referred to as globalization. Intimacy is built by practices which are present in many interpersonal interactions and found across historical and cultural context including those in which intimacy is not celebrated. For example, a parent actively caring for a dependent child, it is also kind of intimacy, but most of the time uh, the stereotypical idea is to connect intimacy to romance, to love, to sexual relationship, but that is what the author is trying to critique or kind to negate the idea that there is no universal uniform of understanding. There, there is a particular uh, European western more model of intimacy which kind of got popularized because of the technology, because of social media. As a result, other forms of intimacy became invisible. However, as we change over time and space and the, from culture to culture, this bonding up, the process of building a connection can vary and it is a cultural construct. It is not kind of not to be overladed with one particular form of understanding. And that is why what is important to understand the cultural embeddedness of intimacy. Jaminson argues that intimacy is not a monolithic concept. It is not one way that this is the uh, only way in which it is practiced. It could have multiple uh, change uh, modes of practices and which will again change in the uh, cultural context, in temporal and spatial context. So, it is kind of deeply entrenched with the specific cultural context. She illustrates how intimate practices are shaped by cultural norms and values, emphasizing the diversity of expression and meanings across different societies, thereby challenging any notion of a singular universally applicable understanding of intimacy. Western centric notions of intimacy may so fall short. So, the western model of intimacy which is more popular in the social sciences has been kind of put forward as the only model, but this is what uh, is problematic. If we kind of look into the practices from a non-western uh, cultural perspective, we see it is kind of includes a whole spe spectrum of intimate experiences across diverse cultural landscape necessitating a more inclusive and a cultural sensitive approach. So, we move from a universal generalized approach to a more cultural specific uh, approach. Now, when we talk about the concept of intimacy, there are a number of other concepts which are kind of used synonymous or which are kind of considered to be similar in meaning to intimacy. The phrase intimate relationship is distinct from the overlapping terms like family, kin, relatives or relations in different culture and period. Family, kin and relatives are often formally defined in terms of traditional or legal rules recognizing and protecting particular partnership, parenting, 
household and inheritance arrangement. So, these are a kind of an organized structure which is necessi necessarily for say uh, family is kind of a unit where uh, the sharing of economic resources, the inheritance and succession takes place. So, it is not necessary that every relation in a family is intimate or there is a practice of intimacy. So, there is a kind of need to diff kind of uh, seclude the idea of intimacy from the related concept of family and kin. In practice, a subjective sense of intimacy may map more or less onto being related or relatedness and living connected lives. So, this concept of relatedness comes in from the cul post Snyder's cultural approach to kinship and the concept was used in anthropology by Janet Carsten where YC says that it is not necessarily the sharing of blood or marital uh, relation, but the uh, kin could relationship could be through sharing of a number of other uh, non biological aspect like sharing food and uh, the other. So, the concept of relatedness or connected life becomes uh, a more important cultural concepts to understand the family and kin relations. Subjective experience really maps precise to formal rules. Intimate relations might include friends and lovers excluded from family or kin except by redefinition that bend the conventions. Some family or kin may never be experienced as intimate. So, we see that there is one particular way in which family was kind of uh, explored in sociology where it was seen as kind of a place where one gets protection, one gets kind of uh, uh, dependency and their needs are taken care by other member. But that is kind of a looking into the positive way in which family could be explained. If we look into the feminist critique uh, of family, then it is the breeding ground for inequality. So, it is if it is a kind of sensing that sense of inequality in your relationship that it is not necessary to experience intimacy. An expectation of love and intimacy is part of the current normative understanding of friends and family of Euro North American culture. The universality uh, or the most kind of uh, important concept which is related to the concept is to look into family as a form of intimacy. So, the universality of friendship as a form of intimacy has been contested. In the context of British society, research shows that friendship relationship are replacing couple relationship as the key intimate relation of adulthood. It has also been suggested that friendship is the purest form of intimacy. Perhaps by taking what may be the western view of friendship, a freely chosen relationship between equal sustained only by mutual pleasure in the quality of the relationship. So, the family uh, uh, is a ground of intimacy, we look beyond the family, then we kind of look into the idea of friends. So, the ma family members are not to be put into the category of friends, it would, it would be a non kin or a non family member who starts developing this connection, this starts developing this bond are kind of considered as to be intimate to each other. But uh, as the author are su is suggesting, this is again a western notion, this is an ethnocentric view of kind of considering a uh, friend as a pure form and intimate uh, relation. The cultural variation in notion of autonomy, privacy and the appropriateness of effect make it diff unlikely that the western middle class idea of friendship as involving a personal, spontaneous, private relationship between particular in individual is universal. Now, there could be uh, multiple ways in which even uh, the friendship as a concept be looked at. So, what we have generally understood is a middle class notion of the western society where they are kind of uh, some amount of privacy, some amount of common interest which then comes out in the form of a friend relation. If we take examples from Europe, China, East Africa, Brazil, then we kind of see that friendship involves affect and intimacy or some form of sentiment or at least empathy and common ground between person is found across the globe. 
So, the another concept which is very close to the concept of intimacy or is a related concept is the love. So, this is the uh, uh, closest conceptual relative and relationship. Conceptually, love and intimacy are close relatives often interchanged in everyday uses. So, if we look at a monolithic form of intimacy, then in the two are used as synonymous. However, it can be more conceptualized as an emotion embodied effect and this uses it becomes an attribute of person rather than a quality of connection between people. So, the feeling of intimacy can occur despite lack of reciprocity in the absence of any relationship with the person. Intimacy always refers to some form of interpersonal connection, but typically flags up a pattern of interaction that is durable over time and acknowledged by both party as a relationship. Expressing feeling of intimacy or the practice of intimacy, exchanging declaration of love can build intimacy. However, in many contexts of developing couple relationship, declaration of love need to operate in concert with other practices of intimacy for express feeling to be heard as authentic rather than suspect. So, the significance of love to intimacy is illustrated by instance of their separation. Relationship between client and professional career or service providers can also practice intimacy. So, it is not necessary to kind of restrict it to the familial or the domestic domain. You, your relation of connection can also be on economic ground, it can also be on certain kind of political relation. So, code of practice marks such relationship as professional and commercial rather than personal, but the absence of intimacy as an aspect of distinction is often subverted, obfuscated or experienced as problematic. This is exemplified when those who rely on professional care report that professionals they most value are those who behave like friends or family. So, we see this thin line between professional and, and intimate relationship when we kind of look into the uh, functions of family or intimate relation becoming professionalized. So, the caregiver, the say in a medical uh, attendant kind of becomes more uh, uh, worthy of uh, building a relationship in the case where they kind of cross over the professional relation and build a trust with the client. So, this is true for example for vulnerable children and young people see speaking about their various support workers and the care workers or the medical attendant. Now, when we look into the other form of related concept is to look into intimacy in marriage arrangements. Intimacy has also been documented in marriage arrangements in which partners are chosen by parents or other kindred other than the couple themselves. So, this is again a kind of uh, mapping the western understanding of intimate relationship versus the Asian concept where the idea of uh, marriage was to uh, look into individuals own choice of intimacy, whereas in the Asian context it is a kind of more in terms of abiding by the code of conduct. So, if we look into a study of uh, Rodger Rossler, he documents how the Makassar people of Indonesia created cultural pathways to love and intimacy for young men and women who led gender segregated life until an arranged marriage involving little prior knowledge of their uh, partner. This process started with the procedure for finding suitably matched couple prior to the marriage and moved through a series of ritual tra traditionally slaggered over months. These traditions have been much eroded and were always shadowed by instance of elopement and self-made marriages initiated by the couple. Although practices of intimacy were kick started by ritual, the biography of some arranged marriage Makassar couples culminated in an intimacy that was intense as any other form of marriage in western culture. So, we look into how you know we can kind of uh, again 
uh, cross over the dichotomy between the way in which even marriage is kind of visualized uh, from a uniform or a singular but a mode of understanding which is again an ethnocentric uh, bias towards it. In anthropology much of the literature has kind of uh, talked about looking into marriage as multiple uh, uh, ways. It is not only about your establishing connection between partners, but it is also to do about a lot of uh, inheritance, uh, uh, property and also in terms of uh, questions of legitimacy and paternity. The next idea uh, that the author discusses is to look into the uh, idea that intimacy is also connected to the uh, aspect of social integration. So, close personal relationships were given central place in early 20th century sociological accounts of the social construction of self and the social world and the articulation between the two. In account deriving from the theoretical tradition of symbolic interactionism that is Mead, phenomenology uh, uh, given by Suze and Parsonial functionalism that is Talcott Parson and Bales or drawing on psychoanalytical tradition emotionally close and physically proximate intimate self shape selves in childhood and anchor adult individual in the social world. So, this connect that uh, is kind of looking into more of your socialization or more of in terms of your individual interaction with the society which would in turn kind of uh, form the personality or also kind of reflect on the kind of person that you are have been a subject of study by sociologists and psychologists. Over the decade the insight of these traditions have been drawn on and reworked. In his account of the dialectical between individual agency and social structure, Giddon restated the importance of intimates particularly parent child relationship for fostering a subjective orientation of confidence in continuity of the self and order in the world necessary for individual to collectively sustain social order. So, if we look into Giddens uh, agency structure theory he kind of connects the two and says that it is not kind of only in terms of understanding what who is an agent or what is the role of agency that is kind of embedded in the structure in which the agency is placed. The another scholar uh, social scientist who is kind of significant in terms of understanding the connect between the self uh, individual and the society is Piri Bodhyo. He gave the concept of habitus. The term habitus refers to the way people perceive and respond to the social world they inhabit. So, again the whole idea is the individual self is the product of the interaction of individual with his or her environment and that is why the habitus becomes very significant. However, there is another kind of a, a set of theories which would kind of give less significance to intimate relationship. So, in some recent theoretical uh, writing they minimize the role of intimate in the construction of self and social world. A major point of such departure emerges from the work of Michel Foucault. He persuasively proclaimed individual self to be more profoundly shaped by discourse than by personal relationship. The self is seen as a regulatory regime, a way of thinking that frame shapes and creates our practices of the self. In Foucault's theory that is a shift in the emphasis towards mediated and imagined relationship and disembodied discourse seems very opposite in an age of digital interconnectivity and global media. Other scholars have emphasized on the power of media and the imagined relationship in shaping subjectivity. So, there is no kind of an individual subjectivity how we think what we uh, how we make an opinion is kind of colored by the uh, subject of the influence of the network society of the social media the technological impact and therefore, the individual or the subjective kind of gets blurred. As evident in the work of Anderson conceptualization of the integrating power of nationalism as imagined community. 
So, Benedict Anderson says that the nation is not a historical, it is not kind of coming out from a territorial area or from certain kind of uh, history, but what a nation is, is in kind of uh, uh, is modern imagination. This is kind of he says that the, because it is so vast, it is so complex that to visualize what a nation is to, would be difficult if we uh, have to trace back the history or to connect uh, by territory. How do we think about a nation is to uh, understand the imagination that people who inhabit that territory makes of the uh, state. So, a shift from time from traditional disciplinary authority of parents over children to more intimate and indulgent relationship between parent and children has been claimed in western and Asian context. So, when we try to understand intimacy, it becomes very connected to the idea of parent child relationship or parental authority. So, it is a intimate relationship between the parent and the child, yet the way in which the authority is exercised is kind of determines the uh, relationship which kind of builds between the two. And again there is a western and Asian comparison where there is a kind of more stress on the child being dependent on the parent in the Asian context, whereas uh, if we kind of look into western value, it is more in terms of uh, 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 more interdependence and more kind of giving space to the individual. Contemporary discussion of parent child relationship in Asia foregrounds concern about process of globalization and western values undermining filial pity along with collective values of loyalty to the family and respect for elders. Kroll uh, uh, another uh, scholar says that there is a reaffirmation of the collective values in the form of intergenerational contract of reciprocal care between parent and child. A shift toward more intimate parenting does not necessarily mean a relinquishing of parental authority. So, as uh, the modernity uh, has kind of led to a more nuanced form of parenting where many a time uh, if we kind of not able to uh, spend time or give quality to the child, it kind of is compensated through monetary spending or through the kind of uh, fulfilling the desire that the child is kind of having. But then it does not kind of do away with the parental authority. There are many more ways in which parents seek control over the children than appeal to tradition. In an attempt to do the best for the children and through them bring advantage to the family, parents sometimes make radical changes to children's life. There is a high risk collective project unilaterally uh, orchestrated by parents and the practice of intimacy are implicated in its success. The western research literature on parent child relationship also documents significant variation in practice of intimacy by social class and ethnicity. Different styles of using praise and discipline have been attributed to class specific experience of occupying subordinate or sub superordinate positions. Practice of intimacy might then overlap with the and become enmeshed in the reproduction of generational power. Similarly, practices of intimacy can become implicated in the reproduction of class inequality. The next idea is to connect intimacy to gender inequality. Just as it is kind of a class based phenomena, it is also can, uh, leads to certain kind of unequal uh, gender relation. An institutional support for men's authority over women persist and are reinstitutionalized as well as subverted through practices of intimacy. For example, among young people brought up in Pakistani families living in Britain, the closer supervision of young women than young men persist alongside equal in parental support for education. While there are also instances of uh, uh, marriages beyond a re, uh, kind of uh, the uh, consent of parents, sometime it kind of is beyond parental wishes. So, the individuals are kind of making their own choice and yet the parents continue to be providing support uh, for their uh, long relationship. 
practice of intimacy are not in themselves automatically democratizing or dismantling of patriarchal arrangement. It has been argued that equality in couple relationship is more readily achieved in the same sex relationship when practice of intimacy are not channeled by pre-established patterns. So if we were to come to a conclusion, we see the discussion of intimacy and parental authority uh, is kind of leads to the understanding of class inequality, gender inequality, practices of intimacy can reinscribe inequalities such as those of age, class, gender as well as subvert them. There is a global interest in understanding in the way people create and sustain a sense of togetherness and significant personal relationship in everyday life. But this everyday relationship is not in a box. It is widely connected to what is taking place outside the family, outside the familial domain. So there is a two-way traffic. It's kind of your personal everyday intimate subjectivity is also the result of the wider economic political context and it influences uh, the way in which intimacy is practiced. A nuanced understanding of personal relationship answers key questions about equalities, about inequality, justice, inclusion or exclusion, sustainability or unsustainable practice. And that is why it is very important to kind of understand something as kind of a, a practice of close connections, building bonds, which had been for a very long time uh, put into the trivial box or something which is not significant. Like, but author Lynn Jaminson, by looking into something as trivial and familial has helped us to understand the process of social transformation taking place with the onset of globalization and capitalism. For reference, it's important to read the work Lean Jeminson published in 2012, Intimacy as a Concept, Explaining Social Change in the Context of Globalization or Other Form of Ethnocentricism. This has been published in the journal Sociological Research Online. This is volume 16, page number 15. Uh, the lecture is totally based on Lynn Jeminson's understanding of intimacy. With this, I come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.